welcome to the program that we conduct regularly retrain your brain release your stress and restore your well-being we all are seekers of progress prosperity and we are always looking at the science the science is making a tremendous progress to help us live in peace, happiness, prosperity, and success, no doubt about it. The science starts with the matter, the material world, and that is different from us, perhaps far from us, and separate from us, like our house, our car, our money, Gadgets, they are separate, they are different from us. It creates an idea in the mind that the peace and the happiness and well-being depends upon the objects, events, people and the gadgets outside us. And that idea takes a very deep ground in our subconsciousness. So we all have to think and contemplate if we can uh, secure inner peace and happiness, health and well-being from the things that lies outside the human frame. Here comes the Eastern wisdom. Let us understand both the science and the Eastern wisdom. It has a unique philosophy, practices, that started almost 6,000 years, of which yoga is one part, tantra is the second, and the self-discovery is the third. And we have 3,000 texts, and we have 3,000 teachers who showed us how to live in peace, happiness, and well-being. And during the period of 6,000 years, every teacher followed the same fundamentals. Yes, there are differences in the practices. Here I need to mention that science is not considered opposite to the Eastern wisdom. The goal is the same, knowledge. Western world says knowledge is power. Eastern wisdom says knowledge liberates us from the stress and the suffering. So it means the knowledge is that power which liberates us, which frees us from the stress and the suffering. But the question Right, is that why knowledge of the science is not liberating us from the stress and the suffering? Why do we think? And sometimes we think that as if uh, these gadgets and the tools designed and discovered by the science is adding more stress. And we have been trying this for the last 70 years since we started understanding that the stress causes 90% of our illnesses. We need knowledge. But question again comes, what kind of a knowledge? Knowledge that does not liberate, is it real knowledge? Or there is incomplete knowledge? Can we say that we are living in the information age and not the age of the knowledge? Information does not translate into reality. We can read anything. We can collect any information from the Google, from the Bing. But until it translates into reality, that information remains at the level of incomplete knowledge. But again, the incomplete knowledge is termed as ignorance. I remind myself that ignorance is bliss because it keeps 
It keeps all of our stress and the suffering in abeyance. We don't know whether we are building the stress deeper inside and we live in ignorance, and then we suffer from severe problems. And that is why the Eastern wisdom says that the ignorance is suffering. Because it will bring miseries hiding behind our skin, our mind, our habits, our accepted norms. What should we do then? How we bridge this gap between the knowledge and peace and happiness? So there comes again the Eastern wisdom that says we are missing the knowledge of the self. And that knowledge of the self is known as the knowledge of the real self. So are we not working with our self? That the Eastern wisdom says that we are working day and night with our non-self. And that self is created by our mind, our habits, our culture, our religion, our civilization, our likes, our dislikes. What we were before mind, what we were when the mind did not learn any of these things, were we crazy? No. What we were before mind learned all these subjects and areas of the material world, that real self existed before learning anything. Eastern wisdom aims at the discovery of that self. It is a subjective reality. We need not to believe that real self. We can start the journey with assumption that there is something within us, always inspiring us for continuation of peace and happiness and love and the wisdom and the kindness and the compassion. Eastern wisdom starts from that real self as a state of the consciousness. And that real self is of the nature of peace, happiness, love, wisdom. Uh, do you understand? That is what it is. Here we have the right knowledge right knowledge of our own self. Does it mean we should leave the science? No, and not at all. Every knowledge had its value. Then science offers the knowledge of the objective world. The Eastern wisdom offers the knowledge of the our own true self. Look at one example. At present, we know too much about our objective self. The mind that has created the self, Eastern wisdom says it is non-self. We claim we are a doctor, we are an engineer, we are a teacher, we are a technician, we are beautiful, we are handsome, we are rich, poor. This is all the creations of the mind. But who we are before all that, we are the real self. Eastern wisdom discovers that. And if we are not this self, we are none of the above, because they are all labels. What should we do to unfold this real self? We should uh, continue to explore our real self while enjoying what the science offers to us, to live in comfort, pleasure and enjoyment, and enjoyment. We should keep our goal of life to discover our own true self. We should live in an active life in the material world to harness our creativity by doing everything with perfection. We should always remember that pleasure is short lived. We should always remember that pleasure is always short-lived. And that is where 
we should always strive to achieve well-being, the state of the real self that guides the wellness at physical, mental, and emotional level. That's why we named this program as Retrain Your Brain, Release Your Stress, and Restore Well-Being. Restore means the, well, the state of the well-being is always present always present deeper within. What is the basis of this program? The basis of this program is the texts and the teachings of the great masters. It combines the understanding of neuroscience. Eastern wisdom said thousands of years ago that uh, Changing the mind changes the brain. No doubt they didn't use the specific word brain in the neuroscience. <clears throat> but they have understood, for example, they see that there are more than 72,000 energy pathways present in the body. And we can alter those energy pathways by different groups of practices, maybe by deeper state of relaxation, by changing the rate and the rhythm of the breath, by chanting certain sounds that helps to change the brain, and there is a long list. One thing it is clear that it clearly states, it clearly states that if we change the mind that becomes lazy, crazy, and blaming, we can change the entire state of the being. It's okay. Don't worry, you're listening to me. Let the cell phone ring. Pay attention. So here we use the two great texts. One is your Kundali Upanishad and the other is the Tattva Bodha. Tattva Bodha lays a foundation of certain principles that of the subjective world. And the Kundali Upanishad helps us to understand that how to apply those fundamentals into different steps that becomes one practice. Why we use these texts? Simple reason. A science uses the manual that contains fundamental principles that can be applied for desired result. <clears throat> Don't you use the manual of the iPhone to start working on the iPhone? So these texts, which has been passed on to us for, from thousands of years ago, so they act as a great manuals for us to understand the fundamentals and the practices. That is why when we follow these fundamentals from the text and the teachings of the great masters that leads to desire changes in our lives. Otherwise, the same thing, it leads to incomplete knowledge, it breeds doubt, confusion, and hallucinations. How this program is different? This program starts with a clear and deeper understanding of the fundamentals that aims at exploring our hidden potential. Its goal is to retrain our brain. What science says, fire the brain to rewire it. After understanding these fundamentals, we understand the steps of the practices. The practices last for 45 to 50 minutes in 60 to 75 minutes program. We share our experiences. We understand myth, facts, aids, and the barriers. And we also clearly understand how to keep our mind away from any kind of hallucination and myth that are surrounded with these practices. And that is why we never use and we never 
think of conditioning your mind. The goal is to bring that freedom of the mind. We welcome you all to join this program. It will help you reduce your anxiety, release your stress, and improve your sleep. Awaken peace and happiness within. It will also help in minimizing the impact of any illness. Any illness. I'm stressing it will minimize the impact of any illness that you have. So what happens when you minimize the impact of that illness? By inducing a deeper state of calmness and relaxation, by withdrawing your mind from outside to inside and keeping it inside for a longer period, that is going to fire the brain to revive it. And at last, you will treat the path of the self-discovery for peace creativity, success, and prosperity. Thank you.